See, it's, I'll say the way I feel about this. Uh, there are a couple of things happening. One is, unfortunately or fortunately, the playing field is getting leveled up with this. So what I mean by that is that people who were not doing well earlier and people who were doing very well earlier, they're kind of at the same starting point again because of this disruption that has happened. So it's good for some and not good, so uh, not so good for others. This is Crisis Cast 2020 with me, Toby Goodman, a podcast where I get timely wisdom from experts in life and business. These guests will answer my five questions, sharing wisdom and insights to help you and me get through this global shitstorm. Today on Crisis Cast 2020, just like Miles, Mozart, and Madonna, there is one business coach known by a single name a name spoken by many in hushed tones of awe, Shweta. She is an active investor and business owner and the most revered business coach in the UK. And within about five seconds of her talking, you'll understand why. So bounce forward into my enjoyable, helpful and hugely insightful conversation with the Beyonce of business, the multi-award winning Shweta Charcharia. Before we start the show, I have something for you if you identify as pod curious. It's perfect for you if you're an expert, consultant or business owner. Maybe you're wondering if podcasting is worth the effort, especially now, or perhaps you've tried podcasting in the past but have been disappointed with the results. In this free guide, Podstar, I'll share the exact seven steps we use to help publish over 2,000 podcasts each month. To get instant access, go to podcastnetworksolutions.com. Shweta, welcome to Crisis Cast 2020. Thanks very much for joining me. Thanks, Toby. Absolute pleasure. So you're in the UK and I'm just wondering, my first warm-up question is always, what's been your experience on a local level so far of the pandemic? You're in South London, I think. Yes. Uh, so our offices, they are in Southwark and our um, house is in Wimbledon. So yes, pretty much south of London. So in terms of uh, experience, Toby, it's uh, it's the mix. So just talking about businesses first, uh, if that's okay with you. We are in business consulting, coaching field and also have other businesses. And what we have noticed is that uh, just at a, at a local level, there have been three kinds of businesses. So one obviously massively impacted by what's happening and no other option than to just sit tight and just wait because of the nature of uh, their customer or client interface. And then uh, the second set of businesses who are actually, who have acted very uh, fast and decisively, and they are somehow just trying to manage their operating cash flow and just sustain themselves, uh, but obviously with the impact on revenue and profitability. And then there is a third category, which is actually booming right now and having some record months. And again, purely because of the nature of the business that they are in. And the whole focus for them is to reach out to their customer base, make an impact, to serve them in the right way. And in that process, process, they are also flourishing. So uh, it's, it's a whole mixed bag, but clearly there has been a big impact in the, in the business world. And as far as other local bits are concerned, being in Wimbledon, which is a beautiful area, I mean, of course, we are being very, very careful and cautious. Things are quiet on the street, as you would imagine, but uh, there's some amazing green spaces. So we try to obviously, you know, make the most of it uh, in, in the safest possible manner. So yes, I'm sure you're familiar with what's going on, but this is, this is what we are noticing. Yeah, right. And so on a personal level at home, has, has stuff changed with how you're working? I imagine you do a lot of work remotely anyway, but I know you're also someone who does a lot of in-person group stuff. So what's happened on a personal level? So on a personal level, I mean, as you rightly pointed out, uh, have been very comfortable with technology from, you know, from, from the beginning. So because a lot of sessions would happen on Zoom or Skype. So it was not tricky at all to adapt uh, the working bit of it. And now obviously it's, um, uh, you know, all five days that we are um, on the computer and working just, just like everyone else. Also, so, so work-wise, I think the impact has not been huge, um, just just uh, the style of working. But with regards to the other personal bits, I mean, I know I shouldn't be saying it, and it's not, uh, I, I, it might not sound right to uh, some of the listeners, but actually, I'm also enjoying this time that I'm getting to spend with my um, son. I mean, I, I, we have got one son, and so just getting to spend more time with him, with my husband, and uh, having a little bit more 
relaxed space uh, in our lifestyle, just able to do things which I've been wanting to do, just able to spend more time. And I think most importantly for me personally is I think having that sense of appreciation and awareness the things that I used to take for granted, you know, for example, our garden, uh, it used to be like, yeah, it's a nice patch, but now every day it's a blessing. Uh, you know, simple things. I think uh, for me, that's the biggest change at a personal level, just appreciating life a little bit more and having sense of gratitude and understanding what are the core things to focus on and to hold on to, you know, as much as one can. Yeah, I think we're all, all of us with a garden are, are really appreciating it. I've run into a woman a uh, few a week or so ago in a big kind of moor that we have and she was she was saying that they lived in a, a tower block you know uh, in the next town and I was just I felt so lucky that that we didn't you know as much as we have a small garden we have one with two kids it's it's a total blessing yep absolutely and for example you know uh, one of the uh, team members I was speaking with just yesterday and um, it just happened that um, you know two of them they were in two different places uh, just when these things started kind of happening and one of the the partner of the team member had to take care of um, his uh, nan and therefore didn't really want to move in together and they for the last six weeks they have not kind of, you know, been in that contact, that human contact uh, and just living separately. And so, yes, you have Zoom, you have technology, but that human contact, just knowing that we have our loved ones with us and they are good people and we can hang out together without killing each other. I think uh, these are the things to really appreciate right now to say that we're healthy, safe and together. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Totally agreed. So you're, you're keeping safe as well, right? So with your family and kids. Yeah, and we have a lot of time. My, my sons are three and six, so it's pretty heavy juicy. Nice. Heavy juicy, nice. but, but <laughs> incredible, incredible and incredibly stressful. Um, but but actually stuff is happening. You know, stuff is happening yeah. with us that, that wouldn't have happened had they been in school. You're a great person to talk about leverage in business and, and not being too busy and all of that stuff. And, and clearly having studied that stuff and trying to implement that as best I can, despite the fact that I have two young kids and despite the fact that my wife is still going into work because of what she does. Oh, well, what, is, what does she do, Toby? She's, um, she's a camera operator at the BBC. Right. So okay. She, so, she's, so she's in the midst of action. <laughs> yeah, she has to go in, but, it, but it, it's, very, it's very scaled back. They're obviously not doing... Um, yeah a large as large a production as they do she's she works in the news but yeah it's just one of those things she has to go into the center of london uh in the ghost town version of the center of center of london when she goes in and works so um yeah but like i say you know despite right. all of that stuff we've we've designed our lives so that so that actually we can we can do this pandemic homeschooling thing and it's largely it's it's working well and we're feeling very grateful Yep, that's that's really nice, Toby. And you know, as as we were talking earlier, Toby, kids they spell love as T I M E. Yeah. So I think that's very important for I think for us to remember that even if you're distracted or we resist or it's just getting too much, it's okay. This is one investment which hopefully will make you feel happy. Saying I did my best possible, you know, that's that's the most important thing. So kids can get, get can get you know a little too much after a point, but uh, it's just making sure you're having your breaks and you're giving the best that you can as a father. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No. Like very feeling very fortunate. So your book sparks starts mm-hmm. with a no. It starts with a no that you got from a potential client called Graham in 2008, I think. Yes. And I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that before I asked you that these two questions that sort of go together, because I imagine that you're someone now who has a perspective on drawing from past crises. And the questions are, you know, how do you think we're all going to get through this? And, and what do you think the other side of it looks like? Uh, <laughs> you can answer that so, in many different ways, I'm sure. Yeah, we can. And I'll, um, I think uh, my take on this is that, look, we are already getting through it. Okay. So with every passing moment, every passing day, we are getting through it and we will come on the other side. Uh, there's nothing called recovering or bouncing back because uh, it's all bouncing forward and it's going to be a new landscape. It's shifting, as I said, with every passing moment. So um, just talking again from financial perspective, and it's, it's a conjecture, it's, it's a guess uh, based on you know what I'm seeing and uh, 
you know, again, just what's happening is uh, there will be uh, there will be an economic impact. Most probably, we will be in a proper recession. Now, whether the recovery or you know the economic recovery, whether it's V shaped or U shaped or what shape that is, that we don't know. It all depends on how we handle this global health crisis, and it's different from previous crisis. It's not really a financial crisis. It's it's a global health crisis, which is feeding onto the economic crisis or financial crisis. So there will be an impact. There's no two ways about it. I mean, again, you know, of course, you know about all the things which are happening and what's being discussed, uh, how government is trying to come out of it and phase things out properly. So there will be ripple effects. uh, But as far as just talking specifically about, you know, SMEs and, and what's going to happen, See, it's, I'll say the way I feel about this. Uh, there are a couple of things happening. One is, unfortunately or fortunately, the playing field is getting leveled up with this. So what I mean by that is that people who were not doing well earlier and people who were doing very well earlier, they're kind of at the same starting point again because of this disruption that has happened. So it's good for some and not good so uh, not so good for others. At the same time, even if the starting line is the same, I know that people who are going to take the lead are the ones who are actually resilient and smart and who are true professionals. And what I mean by that is that they understand business as business. And I think I'm just uh, adding a few points here, Toby. Uh, one of the things which I'm very passionate about is that, you know, people start calling themselves business owners and business, um, you know, entrepreneurs and all the big words, which sound very sexy, but at the end of the day, Do they really understand that profession? It takes us five minutes to register a business and call ourselves entrepreneurs. But have they really studied business? Have they understood what what numbers mean and how they look like? You know, what does operating cash flow mean? How is it different from financing cash flow or investing cash flow? Because in these times, if people are flipping coins and they are not really understanding how business operates, then even if the the, the line is the same, the starting line, uh, people will lag behind. They will get impacted in a negative way. So having that knowledge and having that smart knowledge is absolutely critical right now. One more thing I would add here, and this is another important thing, is that these times will not punish decisive people. It's important to be decisive and move fast rather than sitting there and getting paralyzed into inaction or overwhelm, it's so important to move fast. It's okay not to get things perfect. It's okay to be okay with good because good is good enough um, and move forward. I mean, there was a full study that was done by McKinsey, one of the leading think tanks of the world. And it's it's one of the recent studies that they have published actually towards March end of this year, uh, you know, while COVID-19 has been happening. And they studied 2007 um, and the next five, six years and the whole automotive sector. And when they mapped out the performance of the players in that sector and how the total revenue, uh, total returns that they provided to the shareholders, they realized that there were these top 20 percent of the players. And um, McKinsey calls them resilience. And what they found out was that these people who were actually ahead and in positive returns in top 20 percent, they were not because of some amazing competitive advantage that they had or some great knowledge or innovation that they did. It was purely because of two simple things. And I would really urge listeners to write these two words down for themselves. One is the speed. Is the speed of thought, speed of action. So important right now. And in fact, I've got a different angle to it, not just speed, because speed is like, yeah, moving at 100 kilometers per hour. But I would say it's the velocity. That's the first one. And the difference between speed and velocity is that velocity is speed with direction. We don't want to be just busy and hustling. We want to move in the right direction. That's the first point. The second is discipline. It's the discipline. What are you doing right now on a daily basis as a business professional? How are you leading your team from the front? How are you doing your strategic thinking? Are you still applying yourself or are you just on this vacation and just saying, I'm just waiting and watching? Are you in waiting zone or thinking zone? You know, are you sharpening the saw? That's discipline we are talking about because that's way of living. That's way of conducting oneself rather than just saying, yeah, now I'm, uh, this is how I'm going to be. So, um, you know, when you say how we are going to come out of it, we are all going to come out of it in a very different way. I mean, it's funny when I hear people saying we're all in this together. Yeah, we are in the same storm, but we are in our different boats. So 
we will come out of it in a different way, each one of us. That's how I see it, Toby. A little long answer, but I hope I've conveyed my passion and viewpoint. Very much so. Yeah. Incredible answer. As expected, uh, and maybe even more incredible. I love the bouncing forward as opposed to bouncing back. So bouncing forward into a new landscape. It's all very well talking about, you know, velocity and discipline and all of that stuff. What have you been doing to help people and, and also yourself? Because there seems to be a, a, a need to pivot in in a number of ways for, for people. Um, so <laughs> I knew you would use that I, word. <laughs> I, I hate that word, but, um, but I've written out. So pivot, <laughs> hashtag resilience, hashtag, um, yeah, whatever. Total. So we're all using the cliche words, but you are someone who is encouraging the pivot, if, if you like. Um, so what, what, does, what does it mean? How do you know, how do you know if you're clients are wasting time putting stuff out there or are you in- encouraging them to just throw as much mud at the wall as possible like what does that actually look like and and how do i know i'm i am bouncing forward and not just um creating more stuff to do great question there toby great question um and i'll share with you my philosophy and what i am doing with uh, our clients and with ourselves right because it has to be totally congruent otherwise we're just sharing concepts so um look um the first thing that i would want listeners to remember is that actually for me personally and uh, what i believe in is that it's not pivoting it's actually pausing That's what I think is the first step. And what I mean by that is, this is a perfect time to pause and reflect and reflect on what do you need to stop doing? What do you need to shed off? What do you need to leave behind? See, it's like, you know, and I've been reflecting on this, Toby, and what comes to my mind is Mount Everest, for example, right? So now you're there at that base camp and you're about to make that ascent and the, the weather is going to be difficult. We, there are unseen factors. There's not going to be a huge set of people coming with us. You know, we can't afford to carry all our luggage to the summit. This is like summit. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. There's no two ways about it for most of the businesses. And if we are doing that ascent, then we have to be light. We have to be fit. And therefore, the first thing is what I'm noticing is people are talking about pivoting, whatever the word, it doesn't matter, but it's like, okay, what do I hustle? What do I do? Okay, how do I position myself? And I'm just saying pause because what happens is, you know, when we are in our day-to-day routine, in our business, there's so many initiatives that we start with. There's so many people that we allow to be part of the journey. There's so many unnecessary com- complications or complexities that we add to our working and we never find time to actually say, you know what, do I really need it? Do I, do I, is it really adding value to what I'm doing here? Is this my 80-20? And first thing is to actually stop doing it. And, and there are so many examples, you know, with our clients where we have actually said, we're not taking this forward. Let's stop. You know what? This is not our A-team player. We need to actually stop the journey here. So just become light. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is that, look, if you're light and if there is financial acumen and you have been in a sector which has given you results in the past, there is an evidence of success, then don't panic unnecessarily saying, oh, I need to change and I need to shift and I need to see what needs to happen. We are still coming out of it. In fact, coming out of it is being optimistic when I say that, you know, we're still there. So let things pan out, but keep thinking, keep Stay on top of what's happening in your sector, what's happening in your landscape, and then work on scenarios because it's like you're creating a blueprint. That's so important. And then when the timing is right, test and measure. And if you feel it's successful, scale it up or bin it very, very quickly. So it's all about what's your thinking like when what I see is that people don't think sufficient and then they just commit. And that's like flipping a coin. You know, yeah, there's a 50% chance you will be successful, but what happens if, if you're not successful? And the other analogy that comes to my mind for most of the businesses, and I want to share this here, which surprisingly not very many people are talking about. Some businesses, it is hibernation time where you have to conserve your energy and your resources. But I'm not saying hibernate in your thinking. Keep that sharp and active and work on scenarios, but be very prudent where you are deploying your resources because cash is truly going to be the king in these times. And if we don't have that, then it's 
you know, even if you have a cracking idea or amazing way to pivot, it's going to be very tricky. So that's, that's my, uh, that's what I'm, I'm kind of, you know, working on with my clients and really questioning where are we deploying our energy and resources? Is it, is this the one that will take us forward? And we are being very adaptive. We are changing our plans and revisiting the plans, obviously, um, every, every fortnight, every month. And it's like, yeah, okay. When I say plan, as in proper planning, obviously we are looking at this on a daily basis where things are super sensitive. That's exactly how my approach is, Toby. Yeah, I love it. And I love the example of us all being in it together, but in different boats. That's, um, that's a lovely addition to that, that phrase that's been banded around. Yeah, just awesome. I've, I've been writing a lot. I hope <laughs> people that are listening are writing a lot as well. And, and you're also someone who's mentioned earlier on through um, talking about your work at Growth Idea, someone who is actually acquiring a business right now. You're still doing a deal to acquire a business right now. Oh yeah, totally, totally. And I'm glad you raised this point because, um, you know, this is, this is one thing which, again, I'm very big on with my clients, with my team as well, um, and for ourselves. So it's like, okay, let's focus on what I'm doing here. So yes, my husband, who is also the co-director in the business, comes from Morgan Stanley background, investment banking. I come from Unilever background. You know, I was global marketing manager there. And we both have corporate backgrounds. Um, this was like 11 years back. And for my husband, yeah, six years back kind of thing. So we understand the corporate side of it and SME. I think it's a good combination that we have. Now, from day one, we have always believed in asset building. And what I really want every listener to really question is that, okay, we come out of this whole situation and then what? Do we once again have a glorified job for ourselves, which kind of meet our lifestyle needs? Or are we really thinking big and asking some questions which make us uncomfortable at these times. If, if I were to say, okay, fine, how do you actually build a portfolio of assets? So in future, you can actually have inactive income. Yeah. And I'm really talking about financial independence and not financial freedom because freedom is a state of mind. But how do we create that for ourselves? Imagine if each one of us had to do that. Now for that, you have to truly look at assets which have saleable value. Now, keeping that theme in mind, that's what we do with our businesses. That's what we are building you know, for our clients. And in line with that, we have acquired a couple of businesses, two businesses in the past, 2015, 2018. We were actually supposed to close the deal end of April, which was 30th of April yesterday. But as you can imagine, it has got pushed uh, forward now. Um, so we're literally in the midst of it. Hopefully we will get the deal done successfully. But yes, because it makes sense. There is return on the asset and it's a good business. So yes, it does make sense, though the deal structure might change. And this is exactly the question that I'm posing for, uh, you know, posing for my clients saying, you are thinking of so-called bounce forward through organic growth, as in how we are going to get the business on growth track, right? Of course, we are working on that. At the same time, I think for each business owner out there, you have to start thinking of saying, how do I get in organic growth as well? And I can say this with utter confidence that the fastest way to grow any business is through an organic path. There's no two ways about it, right? And, and, and again, we can go into all kinds of numbers and I can explain you the logic behind it, but the value enhancement that happens and the bottom line impact that happens is just so interesting. But we need to start looking at those opportunities. And again, as unfortunately I say this, that there will be some businesses who will struggle. They will get finance strapped and they will be looking for good partners to work with. And if you could be one of those, you know, who could come in with that knowledge or expertise or partnership or collaboration, not for every deal you need finance. That's, that's not the equity that that's always required. There are other forms of equities that could be put in or input that could be uh, had there. So the first point is, are you thinking like that? Are you thinking of inorganic growth opportunities? And if you don't know the subject matter, if you don't know how to go about it, then you know, reach out to the people who are practically doing it and not just giving you so-called concepts and just fluffy talks. I mean, that's the last thing I believe in. Always check whoever you're working with, always check what are they doing in their business? Are they practically implementing those things? Are they leading from the front or not? Otherwise for me, it's just talk and talk is easy. 
So uh, yes, I'm so looking forward to it. And Toby, not just this deal, we would be looking at another three to four deals at least in the next 12 months. And they're all good sized deals. So um, absolutely, however way we can add value to good businesses out there, good people out there, we would uh, be absolutely up for it. Right. That's good to hear and inspiring. I've got one last question for you, which is what you've seen so far since the pandemic's happened. I wonder, have you seen anything on a local level, on a business level that's impressed you and or even surprised you since this has happened? You have good questions. Um, hmm. Okay. So what's impressed me, actually, two things come straight to my mind. Um, one is uh, the the scale of economic help that came from the government. For me, that was like really impressive. And I was so proud that UK absolutely led from the front. And obviously now is all about speed and actual implementation of that, which is being focused on. That's one. And the second thing was that how every individual, you know, every citizen out there came together spirit-wise and actually was there to support the carers, you know, whether it's NHS or care homes and just appreciating the day-to-day help that we are getting in so many different forms from people out there. You know, for example, Toby, your wife, and she's contributing by, you know, being there out there and it's not safe, but people are doing it. So just acknowledging that for me, it's like, uh, yeah, it has been very touching for me personally. So that's on impressive side with regards to the surprise See, again, I try not to add emotions, you know, to things as in, when I say emotions, as in saying, oh, wow, this is amazing. Oh, wow, this is so bad. Because for me, that's literally going off balance from the state of equanimity and the state of balance. So trying to be in the reality and acknowledging the way the reality is, is very important. At the same time, when I say this and when I'm observing things around me and, you know, people and myself, more importantly, is that I'm seeing COVID-19 or what's happening right now like an amplifier. It's like a scale factor. And what I mean by that, Toby, is that we all have our inherent styles, right? Whether it's our business or ourselves or our family units, whatever is good is getting amplified. And wherever there are chinks, they are actually kind of widening. So it's, this moment is actually amplifying what we already have. And now it's up to each one of us to observe without getting emotional about it, but having that awareness and the courage to face it and then have the humility to say, uh, you know what, I'm blessed to have this or you know what, yeah, I need to become better in this area because there's always the next better version of ourselves for each one of us. So that's how I'm seeing the current situation. Wow. Does that help? Well, it certainly helps me and I'm utterly convinced it's going to help other people that that listen. You've been amazingly generous with with what you have to say and I've I could definitely ask you questions for the next hour or so, but um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But thank you. Thanks so much for coming on. Where can people find out more about Growth Idea and and how you can get involved in, in helping people with their businesses? So, uh, Toby, I'll share with you all these social media handles and you can, you can put it there. But obviously, people can go on growthidea.co.uk and that's where all the information is available. And also, if they want more resources, because I do blogs in a very straightforward style. Uh, so, there is a YouTube channel that I have. Please do subscribe. And I hope I will be able to add value to every listener out there. And Toby, thank you so much because my answers are basically the reflection of your questions. And as I said, you have really good questions. And and it's really commendable, the initiative that you are taking to reach out to as many people as possible and to create that impact. I think that's what matters at the end of the day, how we can help each other and help ourselves in that process. So thank you so much for inviting me over. It has been an absolute pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. This episode of Crisis Cast 2020 was produced by me in London and Kate Astrakhan in Michigan, with artwork by Ryan Field and sound design by Lee Turner. Crisis Cast 2020 is a production from Podcast Network Solutions, a full service podcast production company who are ready to help you plan, record, produce, and promote your message with podcasting. To find out more and grab your copy of Podstar if you're feeling Pod curious, visit us at podcastnetworksolutions.com.